All right, man, touch your tongue, touch your tongue. Six o'clock show, six o'clock show. All right, so look, man. We're going to talk about Drake today. And um, what's really going on with him? Because it just seems like he's moving a little bit differently. And what I mean by differently, maybe not as, uh, not as um, appealing to most people and Kendrick was right about a lot of stuff. So before we get into that, you know, I got to get my spill. This is Torture Talk. If you like the content, please consider subscribing. If you're new here, let me work for your description today. All the beautiful, sexy ladies put one in the chat. All the fellas, you know where to find the ones at. Just don't harass them. I don't sell no merch, but I do have content absolutely free. But if you want to leave a donation, link's on the screen. Cash at PayPal is in the description. They called me a hidden gem. I went from 13 subscribers to over 11,000, you know? And let me know where you're from. I know most of y'all probably like, they know y'all know my spill by now, right? <laughs> like, nigga, just say, just say, leave a donation or something. <laughs> just say, welcome to Torture Talk. Hit the like button. Just get into the content. Like, I understand, but the spill is a part of me. So it is what it is. So let's get to it. <laughs> All right. So this comes courtesy of Deleted. You know what I'm saying? Let's get to it. Let's do it. All right, before we get into this video, I need to do some damage control. No, this video is not the truth. This is all for entertainment purposes only. Please don't take what I say in this video seriously. This is all opinionated, just opinion. This isn't facts. It may be even a little fiction. Don't need to send a cease or desist letter this way. Don't get mad or get your panties in a bunch. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy though. And um, yeah. Drake over here posted up like a girl again. Get him. Knockers in his head and all. Get him. Nails done, hair done, everything did. I guess that was his inner girl anthem. I could tell that he pops his neck and smacks his lips when he's over there gossiping the chubs. Wait a minute. Imagine you looking like this calling another grown man chubs. That's diabolical. It explains this pic right here. A bunch of thuggalicious men. The softest hip hop picture I've ever seen in my life. Why do they all look like they're about to cry? Boy band vibes. I feel like they're about to bust out and start singing. How do y'all expect me to take you seriously when your boss has eyeliner on? Y'all really gonna sit here and act like Drake won't cry? <laughs> Bro, oh my God. Yo, I... Damn, man. What happened to hip-hop? What happened to these people, man? I don't understand it. I do understand it, but I don't really want to speak on it. It's a lot. And have Venom Nut smear down his face? And you want me to take this pic seriously? Stop it. And is that Hello Kitty on your phone, bruh? Why is Hello Kitty on your phone case? Everything had to be extra feminine, didn't it? For what? Even the phone did a hair flip. Yep, I'm bullying the phone too. It's up for everybody. Ever since bruh grew some inches in his hair, he wanted to be a part of the women. He used to sing to women, and now he became a real life female rapper. But for real though, what happened to Drake, man? Growing up, we used to mock his soft ass, his sensitive simps. Side. We used to all clown and say, hey, don't drink and drink. You know, a spin to the saying, don't drink and drive. But we changed. <laughs> don't drink and drink. <laughs> I can only think, I can only imagine that this, that means like, don't be drinking and then texting some chick, some crazy shit. <laughs> That's probably what that means. <laughs> a meeting to don't drink and text your ex or your women like drake would we made fun of his softness he had for women but we actually really enjoyed his music back then he had a way to express how we really felt after a heartbreak or how we feel when we want to pick up the phone and check on our old fling or maybe what it was like when we were rejected by the baddie we all wanted although drake would be a little extra than most men with expressing his emotions to women all of us men had a little drake in us at some point in our lives hey Hey, pause, pause, pause. Not like that. What I'm saying is we all been there where we wanted to hit up an ex or maybe felt sad over that one baddie who got away. Yeah, we took jabs at Drake because it was a friendly SIG fest or roast session, depending on where you're from. We we call it SIGging from where I'm from. But anyway, Drake never been for real zesty, zesty. He was always just saw. So what happened? What what changed? I don't for real get pulled into this whole clone. Con yeah, I don't know what happened either. Like, I think, I think the uh, society has become more feminine. 
And I'm going to say this. I've seen some people jumping in the comments. And they were saying that they disagree with the whole take on the homosexuality thing or whatever. Here's my thing. From what I'm seeing, most men don't carry themselves like that. Most gay guys do. Right? And I'm, and this is not me cr uh, cracking or making jokes about gay guys. I'm just saying. That leans more towards the feminine side of gay guys. Men don't do that. Now, there are men that do wear ponytails, but not with Hello Kitty, duck lips, barrettes. That's feminine. That's leaning more towards the feminine side of this here. I'm a masculine man. There's certain things I do that is funny, but for the most part, I live in my masculinity. Some men live, they're men, but they live in femininity. You can't be a, a man living in femininity. It just This is living in femininity. That right there, that picture, that was of Drake. So that's what I mean by that, if that makes sense. Conspiracies about celebrities, but this is for real giving clone Zesty Zesty. He was always just soft. So what happened? What what changed? I don't for real get pulled into this whole clone conspiracies about celebrities, but this is for real giving clone vibes. Bro doesn't even look like Drake anymore. Tilting his neck and poking his lips out like he's Zoolander. Bro, what are you doing for real? The Azimpic must also be a testosterone tranquilizer or something. Cause what in the actual fuck? What concerns me the most is that he continues to present himself as a gangster with a tough demeanor in his music. Yet his his appearance resembles that of a teenage girl. Better yet, a teenage stud named Mookie. It just doesn't go. Mitch matching ass. Because Snoop Dogg and Nipsey Hussle have both worn their hair just like this before. Even old school pimps wear their hair like this. And sometimes they press it and style it. It's just how he presents it, I guess. Hey Drake, don't you know what the duck lips even implies? And you sitting here popping the lips right out your face. Dude can write when he wants to. He's written songs for other people and made his own hits as well at one point of his career. Career. He's written for the likes of Alicia Keys, Beyonce, Jamie Foxx, Kanye West, Rihanna, Rita Ora, and the list goes on. However, that didn't change the fact that he would then take the biggest L to Kendrick Lamar in the Civil War this year. But he stood on all 10 unlike J. Cole's scary ass. And I seen some of y'all saying in the comments that Drake didn't take his L like a man. Whether he was bitter about it and threw some jabs after, he still did take his L as a man because he accepted the challenge to begin with. He didn't run from a fade. People get their ass beat all the time in the real world and then go on to claim they won the fight when everyone knew they really got their ass dragged. It's no different. He took his L. And I respect bro for going to war in the first place. Well, that's, that's facts. He did take his L and he did go to war. He, he, didn't, he didn't back down. He didn't back down. I'll give him that. But man, I just don't get the newfound bitch in him. Drake, what's going on? Blink, my nigga, are you in trouble? I'm starting to think this might be some sort of humiliation ritual. Maybe because of his lifelong contract with Lucian Grange for the power he now has of other people's music was the exchange of his own manhood. Now, I'm not gonna say I believe this take, but shit, it's not something I wouldn't pass by him or anyone else. What are you willing to do for fame and for money, my nigga? I'm gonna be honest, I don't wanna look like a Powerpuff girl. I I can tell you that. I don't. Oh, Buttercup looking at him. Maybe this is his midlife crisis people talk about. He's trying to find himself before 40. Hey, do you, bruh. That's your business. You're rich as fuck. If you're bored, just say that then. Doing anything to make your life more exciting. I feel like I'm watching an episode of Sex in the City with Carrie Bradshaw's ass trying to uplift herself after a heartbreak. What's next for Drake, man? When is this new album coming? I know he has that new album with Party Next Door on the way. A lot of people are excited for that. I wonder 
what it will sound like. Rumor has it that it might drop on its birthday, October 24th. But there's also a rumor that the Boogeyman might also drop on October 24th. Everyone's saying that's how Kendrick's gonna keep trolling and keeping his foot on Drake's neck. He's gonna drop the album on his birthday. If he does that, that's so crazy. That's on some real villain shit. Real demon time shit. If Kendrick does some shit like that, that's gonna be funny as hell. I ain't gonna hold. Wait, hold up. I'm gonna get off topic real quick. If both Kendrick Lamar and Drake end up dropping new albums, which one are you listening to first? Kendrick's next album is crucial. It will show whose music captures the most attention and drives the highest sales, offering insight into who holds the audience's interest. Beyond numbers, this release will determine if Kendrick can maintain the momentum and position he's carved out in the industry. While he's already secured major victories this year, some speculate that he might not be able to keep his dominant spot. This album will be the real test of whether Kendrick has truly won over the audience for the long run. Yeah, he won the war, but did he secure the people? I'm gonna be honest, this is I mean, that's a good question. But at the same time, it's, it's I can't really apply that to him because he don't necessarily need to do that. He never did that. The war was the war. It is what it is. Now, if, you, if people say that what he's doing has to secure the people, I think he already got, he already secured the people because whatever he do, whatever he drop is going to go crazy. doesn't matter. Whatever he drop is going to go crazy. People are waiting for it. They wait till next year for it. But I don't think he's going to drop on Drake's birthday. I don't think he's going to do that. I take and y'all might not agree but Kendrick needs to come out like old Kendrick Rigor Mortis Mad City Alright Humble Look Out For Detox Even The Range Brothers And Family Ties Or his albums like Damn and Good Kid Mad City And even though Mr. Morale And The Big Steppers Was an album that needed to age To be appreciated This album seems to have shifted The public's perception of Kendrick Casting him as a saint And creating expectations For him to always behave accordingly However his career has consistently centered around the internal struggle between righteousness and embracing darker, more complex aspects of his identity. He needs to remind the people who the fuck he is and what the hell he's about. People listen to Drake because people like the way he sounds instead of actually listening to the lyrics. And these same people call Kendrick's music boring because of his last project. Kendrick needs to find a balance that appeals to a broader audience. Even though Not Like Us was more of a parody song to shut the gobblers up when they were saying that he made boring tunes and he had to let them know I can I can make ass shaking music too and I'll still kill your savior. He would need to figure out how he can deliver the melodic elements that resonate with the Drake gobblers while also staying true to the style that his longtime fans have come to appreciate. It can't be all the way conscious though. Not like Mr. Morrell or Section 80. Even if his core fans want this, it can't. It needs to have balance like Overly Dedicated or The Damn Album. So this will be interesting. Don't forget Academics, Maul, Aiden Ross, all of them. They are all Drake meat munchers and are here to push a narrative against Kendrick for Drake because their fan base are easily manipulated. And I honestly don't think they're on payroll. They're just male groupies. I feel like Drake puts a good word in for them to get these sponsorship deals, but that's where it stops. I now, I agree with that. Aiden Ross, I think, is a little bit different because I think him and Drake own something together. The other people, no. But I do believe that they are on payroll. I do believe that. Um, but what he's speaking is all facts right now. Let's keep it going even give them that type of clout of actually being on payroll. They're never invited to Drake's outings or even his events, which lets me know they aren't a part of his team. They don't get free concert tickets. I don't never see him pull them on stage or takes pictures with these guys. And we all know how Drake is obsessed with his friends. They're just pawns for Drake. He's using them. So the bot allegations will be in discussion again, obviously. But Kendrick's not going to need the bots because everyone is waiting for this drop. I also peeped that 
Tyler, the creator, passed on the October 24th weekend date. Most albums are known to drop on a Friday. Tyler publicly announced he's coming out on the 28th, which would be a Monday, to let whoever know that wants to drop Thursday the 24th or Friday that it's open for them to get their sales in. I'm gonna be honest with you, I predict that KDOT will drop on the 24th or sometime that weekend. SZA even recently posted on her story about Kendrick dropping, as well as Schoolboy Q, and I'm pretty sure this will be the way Kendrick keeps trolling Drake, or I could just be wrong and if so, fuck it, I thought that would be hilarious. Everyone is saying that this was a 20v1 battle, but was it? Yeah, Kendrick had all the rappers on his side, but Drake had the media and has had every big media streamer or rap commentator on his side spitting narratives and feeding the people Kendrick had all the rappers on his side, but Drake had the media and has had every big media streamer or rap commentator on his side spinning narratives and feeding the people the lies he wanted them to digest. Man, he even had fun. That's 100% facts. He definitely did have, have the media on his side. And look at Uma Thurman. Look at her. That was a great movie though, I ain't gonna lie. And well the first the first one was. First second one was kinda weird. She was in the grave and so I'm like go up there. Come on, man. She's corny. But uh yeah, no, he's right. Let's go. Fucking Uma Thurman asking bruh if he needed the Kill Bill outfit in Katana. The average white woman is going to see Uma fucking Thurman's cosign and think Drake won the battle. It's easy brainwashing. Let's be for real. Was it really 20v1? Cause I would call the shit a 50-50 split. Nigga, you ain't Jim Jones. Take them damn bollies out your hair. You look silly. This nigga for real thinks he's giving pimp or sugar free or drew down when he's really Uzi Vert mixed with Cleo from Set It Off. Now fuck that. Actually, Cleo harder than that nigga. Cleo went down like a thug. He too soft to be Cleo. And J. Cole is TT scary ass running away. Don't want no smoke, but want to be recognized that he was mentioned. I do wonder what Drake's album will sound like. Hopefully he can redeem himself, but I doubt it if he's still dressing like a teenage tomboy. I have yet to see the man. You need to evolve, Drake. Show some type of growth. Your music hasn't evolved this entire time. Mentally, that is. For you to excel at storytelling in real life situations back then about experiences with women, you would think you would be able to do the same shit today, but in a grown man's perspective instead of the same 20 year old mindset. And then that's true. That's true. That's true, man. So we're going to end it there. Uh, guys, make sure you go follow, delete it. So I know a lot of people are on this conspiracy theorist thing. And I used to be like that a long time ago. I was always into conspiracy theories. I'm still into certain things because some of those conspiracy theories actually came true. Um, but Drake being a clone, I don't know if I believe that one. I'm, I'm not, I know that the lead is not saying that, but some people do believe it. But <sighs> there's a lot of behaviors that he has done over time. And I believe that it's not because he would clone. I believe that it's because the way the world has has been moving towards the way the world is operating. A lot of things have become more uh, acceptable, acceptable, acceptable for men to be a certain way. You know what I'm saying? And in this case, that's what it is. So I don't know. I don't know how to even say that or even take it. I'm just saying the whole duck lip thing and all that, the hello kitty thing and, Maybe he could be advertising for someone. I don't know. At this point, you really don't know what Drake is doing. And it's very, it's very, it's very disturbing to watch. You know what I'm saying? But either way, it's hard to look away because it's like a train wreck. Got to see it. All right, man. I'm out of here. See y'all in the morning. Peace. Bye. <laughs>